All right, welcome back. This time I'm going to make a clock with a three-dimensional image on it. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to put yet. I'm not exactly sure I'm going to design this. This one might take a little while. Anyways, I'm going to have this one be 10 inches. It's going to be live edge redwood by 16 on the Y, I guess. That's good enough. We'll call it three-quarters of an inch. And let's go. So I'm going to start with a three-dimensional image. And I want the image to be so looking at it I want this part down here at the bottom to be the left side of the image I think let's just start with it let's see let's go over here to uh, clip art clip art 3d oh wait oops um, yeah, let's just start with the animals <coughs> excuse me excuse me let's start with animals I like the leaping bass. I haven't done a lion yet. A lion might be pretty cool. I haven't done a bear yet either. You know what? Let's do a bear. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to the modeling tab. Actually, wait. Let's rotate this. Nine, nine. Boom. Let's stretch it a little bit. Excuse me. Okay. Let's center it. And let's just bring it back. See, you can see up here. Boom. As long as when I slide this down, watch when I start moving this, watch that top line. Okay, see how it's basically on that, that measure, that 5 mark? So I can bring it all the way down, and then I just push this line up here at the top back on that 5 inch mark. And I know... Whoops, oh, I went too far. Daddy. What, honey? Um, I broke my fan at Miles yesterday, and Gabby did this to my fan. Oh, well, honey, I'm sure he didn't mean to. I'm recording a video right She's now, honey. She's a baby. Hey, I'm recording a video, princess. Okay, Daddy. Go play, okay? You tell me all about later. <clears throat> all right. So, modeling, okay, let's try this, let's see how this looks, roughing toolpath, let's do, let's do the eighth of an inch in mill, feed rate, 100, plunge rate, 30, step over 30%, Oops, and calculate, oh, just got to make sure you select the vectors, okay, and that's going to take one hour, 59 minutes, 32 seconds, <clears throat> so now let's do the finishing, um, yeah, let's do the 16th of an inch, or the 32nd of an inch, that's what I have there. Not too shabby. I kind of like that. Hmm. It won't be black, by the way. It's going to be... material color. <coughs> aye, aye, aye. I guess that's okay. I don't know. Actually, the more I look at it, the more I'm not too crazy about it. Let's find something different. Let's go back to the clip art. I do like the waiting moose, but I just did one of those. You know what? Let's do this for my buddy, Interp uh, 66 I know it's just a gold... You know what? No, it's a goldfish. Where's the bass? Boom. Yeah, let's do the leaping bass. 
center it. We're going to stretch it a little bit. And then we're going to, again, just watch this top line up here, this 5-inch mark. Anywhere I move, this thing follows me up there on that tape measure, that measuring stick. So, and if you want to, what you can do is you can put a guideline in. Maybe. There. You have to make sure you're not selected on the item or the image. Guideline. Um, we want horizontal. See, and that would be two inches from the border. That would be an inch. Then I know when I slide this down. That's going to make it about one inch from the side. Now, I think I want to go more like two. Just don't like the looks of that. Okay. That I'll do. Now, let me get rid of that. Let's go back to the modeling tab. Boom. Select it this time. Delete these. 3D. Eighth of an inch. Reset preview. Okay. And then um, let's go to the finishing tool path. 32nd of an inch, calculate. Two hours, 42 minutes on the finishing tool path. I think I like that one better. Now, let us go up. I have limited experience doing clocks, but I know this. There are 12 hours in a day, and there's 360 degrees in a circle. So, I need to take... Where's the calculator on this bad boy? That's not it. Go away. Calculator. We need 360 divided by... 30, yeah, 30. That's what I thought. I was feeling positive. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, just for reference, we're going to put a circle. Uh, my hands are four inches in length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a four inch circle with the radius. Oops, with the diameter. Sorry. Create. Then I'm going to center it. F9. Oops. F9. And I'm going to move it up. Boom. Okay. So now, <clears throat> this isn't for anything other than a reference. I'm not going to actually carve this circle. I need to figure out how to... I'm just going to have lines. So, what I think I need to do is put guidelines. Let's go guidelines... Um, horizontal, then we're going to go, boom, then we're going to go, guidelines, a vertical, boom, now we're going to go guidelines, oops, what did I just do, control Z, undo, ah, ah, Okay, what did I do here? Where's the undo, undo? What is that, control X? Nope. Whatever, I'm just going to put back a new daggum circle and be done with it. Alright, let's do this. See, I like that. Whenever you get like close, when you make these guidelines like this, it'll automatically click into place. And now I know I'm centered where I was. 
Okay, guidelines, angled. We're gonna do like 30. And we're gonna bring it down. Zoom way in on it. This is max zoom here. All right, guidelines angled. Let's try negative 30. Okay, guidelines angled negative 60. Guidelines. And, oh, dang it. Guidelines angled negative, or I mean positive 60. Now, that should be where I need to put all my hour reference marks. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, I was debating doing Roman numerals, which that might look cool. You know what, let's try that. Let's try that first and see how it goes. I don't want New Times Roman. I want something... Let's try this one. So, let's go V, oops, V, I, I. I interrupt this regular scheduled broadcast to tell you that I am currently using the letter 7 as the number 12, and I do figure it out. However, it takes me 20 minutes or so. Thank you. <laughs> Those things are kind of funny. Now that's not too bad. Let's see what it looks like when I shrink it down. Oh, but wait. I'm seeing, look at what I'm doing here. This is 12 o'clock right here. You know what else I think I want to do? Is to ensure consistency from this to the bottom of my letters. I think I'm going to put one more circle. Sorry about that. I'm going to put one more circle. Four and a half inches. Right. Boom. Now, when I make my lettering on my Roman numerals. Dang it. I can do it. I don't like this lettering. I'm going to change it. I can just... Bring it right to there. Boom. And I can ensure that all of the, every letter will be a perfect half an inch from the clock. Because the hour hands are four inches in length. And then they progressively get shorter. Or the minute hand, I mean, is... Yeah, the minute hand is... Or maybe it's the second hand. I don't know. One of them is four inches long. So, this should ensure that it gets pretty close to the letters, but not too far away. We're not too close and not too far away. I don't know what I'm saying. Here, let's roll on. I'm going to change this text. I don't like it. This font. Let's see what this one looks like. Blowhorn and a couple umbrellas. Interesting. Definitely not. Definitely not. You know, that might be okay. Just straight up plain Jane. That one. So nine. So rotate it in 45 degree increments. Now, actually, you know what? Don't like that one either. Sorry. 
We can do better than that. That one's interesting. Oops. Yeah, no, that'll do. Let's go on to the next one. So we're going to do one. Oops. Make sure you unclick your text first. So we're going to go capital I. So we're going to go, let's rotate this one in here. Because we need to rotate it to 30 degree. Wait, negative 30. No? How do I do this here? Oh, I see, because I'm actually at the 60 degree angle. Boom. Now I need to do, click off of that this time. I, I. Then. I, I, oops. I, I, I. Then V, oops, wait, 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 no. I, V. And then V. V. V, I. And then V, I, I. V I I I and then we got I X oops here we got X oh that's funny okay I can fix that X, I, boom, well, let's change this to 12, not 7, X, I, I, bam, can you please keep it down, honey, no yelling, okay, I'm trying to record a video right now. So I'm just measuring from that to there, so it's not quite perfect. It's like a little bit over a quarter of an inch. So really what I need to do is I need to, oops, I need to bring this one in just a wee little bit like that. That looks pretty good. It should be about almost point three. Pretty close. Close enough. I mean, you can't tell like two or three thousandths of an inch by eye. <clears throat> okay, so now let's find Roman numeral number two. Was that on a mirror, Cobra? 
Please stop yelling, honey. Okay. Can I not make it to? Okay, well, let's fix that. I probably changed it. If you don't click off of them when you do your next number or letter or whatever, you'll change the one that's lit up. Okay, so let's go back to this rotate. Now let's do this one to 30. Okay, a little bit closer. This one is right already. Okay. I be. Oh, there it is. I'm just going to lay these out real quick. Five. Where is six? There it is. Make sure you don't move those guidelines. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11. Alright, and now we're going to go in each one of these and we're just going to rotate them. So we're going to do this one positive 60? No. Negative 60. No, that's not right either. Negative 30. Okay, now I need to add that three back since I just, boom, that puts it back to where it was, 30, there we go. Yeah, they're all going to be in increments of three, 30s or 60s. So this one should be 60. Kind of guessing here. Nope. Negative 60. Boom. This one's going to be an even 90. So we can just flip this one with the zero button. Oops, I got to close out of this though. Stop it. Or not zero nine. I mean, what did I just do? I think that's the right way. This is where I get confused on clocks is how this five, if that's the right way or not. I think it is. I think that's how they're supposed to be. Because if not, it's not a V, is it? It's. Let's see. Let's rotate this 180. Oops. Okay, now let's click on the right button and rotate it 180. Oh, maybe that's it. You know what, I think that's probably it. Yeah, I think that's it. God, I'm going to have to do the Google search real quick. Clocks. Let's just see a few images here real quick and look for a consistency. Nope, five is, the V is pointing to the center. V is pointing to the center. That's a weird looking thing there. But it looks like 
No, this one didn't. Look at this one. They don't. Most of them do, though. Look at this one is how I have it right now. I kind of like it that way, though, to be honest with you. This looks a little bit jumbled up. This is wrong, because that's not even a four. But it just looks jumbled up. This should be more like a... Looks like a astrological symbol or something when it's upside down like that. But then again, none of the f sixes and sevens are upside down either, though. They're all relative to the center of the clock. So, why is the five different? I don't know. So we're just going to do it with what the majority of these do here. Just keep the number symmetrical to the center of the clock. We can do that. Okay. So this needs to go back 180 degrees. Boom. Come on, you. Okay. Oops. Come on now. This one needs to go 180 degrees also. Boom. This one. Um, let's see. Oh. Let's... So if that one's an even 90 or 180, that means the next one's going to be, is that going to be a 60? Let's try it. 60. Negative 60. Nope, it's 30. Damn it. I'll get it. I'll get it. smaller to make it a little smaller so you know what I'm gonna have to do here I'm gonna have to wing it a little bit so I want this to look whoops that's the wrong way I want this to look right and when I shrunk it like that it seems like it took it out of its natural shape I think that'll do and this one is actually I think that's upside down no it is let's rotate this 180 Is that right? Let's go back to our old clock face here. Yep. Okay. 
So now this one's going to have to go XI. So we're going to try it this way first. Boom. Yeah, no, I got to fix that. That's not right. Because that rotates it. 9 rotates it in 45 degree increments. And I need to go in 30s. So I need to go back 15. Oops, that's the wrong way. Negative 15. Apply, apply. There, that should be it. Don't disappear on me. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's get that like this. Group those together and get them out of here. Now, let's carve them, see what it looks like. I think we're going to use 30 degree for this one. And we're going to I like it. So let's go back over here. Now what I need to do is I need to do the back. So I have the movement in front of me here and I'm going to measure it with my calipers. Make a mock-up of it. So Across the y-axis, it is 2.22 inches, so we're going to call that 2.3. 2.3. Across the x-axis, it is 2.19, so we're going to call that. 2.3 and we'll create that box where did you go oh there's the two that I lost earlier there you are bless you okay so now put this right here it should snap in with my guidelines once it's centered now what I need to do is I need to put the top on this because it has like a little pyramid deal. So we're going to go from the top up to, come on. Ay, ay, ay. Can't get these things to function. Two point seven five, so we'll call it up to 2.8. Um... Let's do this. We need a guideline. Guideline. Horizontal. We need it. I'm trying to measure just the top. It's not that easy. half an inch. We'll call it a 0.65. So I need to go 0.65 up from that top of the box. Get back here. Okay, so this is at 13.15. So that means I need to take it up to 7.5. Let's go to eight. It's going to be held in with a nut anyway, so if it's a little big, it's better a little big than too small. Now I need to go here, and we're going to go 
from this corner to the center guideline and back down to this corner and close now what we need to do is we need to do right click select all open vectors see these here we need to join oh we can't okay let's do this boom let's try to weld those suckers bam now this is the pocket that's going to go into the back except for it's facing the wrong direction so i need to rotate it 90 degrees just like that and i need to recenter it now that should be it i hope let me do some measurements on my movement here real quick <clears throat> Okay, so the center hole, I need 0.35 or 0.33. That's good enough, I guess. Oops, dang it, no, stop. The wrong buttons. 0.33. Create, close. Let's go find that little way. It's right here. And then it should snap in there. Okay, point three three. And so now from the center of this to the outside, one point one five. Okay, I had to jump in here. What I'm doing now is wrong. When I rotated that profile or that pocket tool pass for the movement, it threw a skew the center hole and I did not fix it um, I'm measuring things but I'm clearly looking at stuff wrong because after I stepped back and took a break and looked at it I realized that hole needs to slide back approximately three-eighths of an inch or so so I fix it and when I actually machine this part it will be different from what you just watched me that from the toolpath you just watched me, or you're watching me create so just keep that in mind if you're doing something like this, that what I'm doing here is wrong. Instead of just take a chisel and wallow it out than it is to take your end mill and run a whole nother tool path, widening the sucker up by a tenth of an inch. So 2.95, top to bottom. Oops. I got 2.72, so yeah, we're good. Now, this is going to be the tricky part. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going stop it. I'm going to <clears throat> because see, here's the deal. This material is 16 inches in length. The problem with that is I haven't cut it. I just came up with an arbitrary number that I want it, so I got to cut the, the material down. So I'm going to have from the si ex side of my um, pocket pass for my movement, this is going to be on the back of the material, mind you, I will have 2.868 inches. From the bottom. 3.52, 3.55, see, because when you flip this sucker over, every thousandth of an inch counts, if this isn't perfect, and I've only done this once, actually twice, 
and the first time was almost a failure. Um, I think what I want to do is I want to run the pocket pass first, and then run the this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this up as a drill tool path. And I will drill it when I do the pocket. Drill, at depth, we're going to go 0.75 with a quarter inch end mill. Okay. Boom. Now, then I can uh, do this pocket. And so the thickness of my movement is 0.65. So... I'm going to make a pocket hole of 0.65 with a quarter of an inch end mill. Oops, right, wrong button. Boom. 130. Yep, good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate. Wait a minute, what did I do here? That's not right. Let's try this all over again here. Did something screwy. Pocket. That's why. I didn't set my depth. Edit. We're going to go at um, 0.8 plunge depth. Or pass depth. Step over 40%. And calculate. You know what? Dang it. I'm going to edit this. I did this wrong again. We don't want a large area cleaner's tool. And so that'll be on the back. 11 minutes. That's really going to take time. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to recalculate. See, because when I... Where's the... Okay, let's scroll up here. When I do this V carve, right, the home position's right here. Okay, so this is how it's going to have to come out all these letters. When I flip the material, here, let's do it on this one to be better served. Okay, let's see. Yep, that's right. Okay. So it's going to, this is the home position, see this red line, that's the home position. What it's going to do is it's going to come this way. Now when I flip the material, my pocket's going to be right here, pointing towards 12 o'clock. But the home position should be here. So... I think what I'll need to do is maybe just, no, because that's going to put it off. Edit. sure what to do about this if this was symmetrical right and it was exactly the same like if this was a round piece of wood and this was directly in the center the home position would theoretically be the same distance from every side but because it's off centered like this I think I'm gonna need to run totally separate tool paths like a different material you know, um, like take the same, watch, 
let's see if I can do this here. Uh, let me think real close about this so I don't confuse myself. Boom, boom. Let's get this stuff off of here. Okay, I'm going to delete this. Delete this. Delete that. Delete this. So now what I need to do is I need to take this stuff off of here. Boom. I need to put these two back. Whoops. group those for now okay so now I think what I need to do is I need to recalculate new job size same dimensions same everything except for the home position being here I need to set the home position for here right <clears throat> and then what I do is I will go okay because I've already generated these tool paths for the vcarve and the 3d file so now what I'll need to do is flip the material over then come over here right boom let's ungroup them real quick so we're gonna run a pocket 0.65 yep that sounds good and calculate no that's the wrong side <laughs> bless you that would be behind the fish. So let's set new job dimensions. What if... Okay, so that's... Boom, the clock's here. Three damage is here. If I just flip the wood like that and put my own position right there, so it's technically on the same side, it's just flipped. I think that's what I need to do. Let's try that. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, there. Boom. Hopefully... That's it. And what's the worst that can happen? I waste a piece of redwood. Not the end of the world. I'll live to do it again, I'm sure. Okay, pocket. 0.65. Calculate. Preview. I do believe this is going to be wrong like facing the wrong direction. I think this is pointing towards 6 o'clock. So let's try something here. Delete this. Reset preview. Go back here. Let's flip this sucker over 180 degrees. Boom. Now, when it's flipped, because when it's flipped, this is going to be here, and this is going to be there. So this should technically be pointing at the 12. And when you flip it, let's try it. This will work. Yeah, I think, I think we got this. OK. 
Okay. Now let's plunge a hole in this bad boy. I think we got it licked. 0.75. Um, okay. Preview. Boom. Boom. So now let's do this. Well, I think that's going to work. We're going to find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put this bad boy in the machine. And I'm going to make this. And win, lose, or draw, this video will be up in a handful of days. And we'll be able to see how we did. So, uh, well, I didn't say the beginning, but subscribe, please. And uh, come on back and we'll see how this project comes out. Hopefully it comes out good. But, you know, it's some redwood that I milled up myself. Didn't cost me nothing. As long as I don't break any bits or anything or break my machine, then... I guess it's going to be a relatively painless, painless failure. So hit the subscribe button, come on back, and thanks for watching to the next video. I'm out.